Um, shall we get started? Okay. Um, everybody, if uh, as much as possible, please come sit up in front. I'd like to see your face. Um, this will be uh, as much as possible an open discussion. Um, I'm going to try and prod you with questions, and I hope you'll be willing to answer them. Um, uh, building Debian from Debian uh, is the name I gave for the talk. I don't know how great of a name it is, but there's all these tools in Debian that are used to create Debian installations. So um, they have some commonalities, some differences, uh, and I'd like to see us move towards, uh, if possible, uh, using common tools, seeing where we're, not, we're going to have to continue to differ, and trying to get over the, always the, uh, the oh, I want full control over my tools, and I don't want to have to wait for somebody else to fix something. Uh, and then we spend all our time re-implementing things others have done as well or better. Um, so the first question I have for you all is, uh, what kind of representation do we have here? What sort of projects have you worked on? Um, and uh, if you please go ahead and pass the mic. And Anybody? <laughs> I'm the author of Ten. I'm the author of Fire and sure I'm using dbootstrap. So I mainly rely on dbootstrap and the rest is done by my tool. Okay. Uh, I will start I'm starting to work with the Open Moco Debian group or team or whatever. Uh, since this week. <laughs> so uh, what I want to do is to build kernels for, for the open mock. Surely there's somebody else here. Are you awake yet? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just a user sometimes of the bootstrap and I'm interested in how Debian works also technically from inside and the package management system. So everything related with repositories and curating your own set of packages interests me a lot. Okay, um, okay. so maybe uh, I'll just list off a few tools and if you have any experience uh, developing and or using these tools, please raise your hand. Uh, I'll start off with the stuff I work on because why not? Uh, LTSP, anybody? Uh, uh, all right. Uh, simple CDD. Uh, Debian CD, of course. <laughs> Debian installer. Come on. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Surely you've done it once. <laughs> uh, Zen tools. Zen tools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, util v server. Okay, Debian Live, uh, uh, okay, uh, libvirt or vert inst, I haven't really used it much, but okay, pbuilder, uh, uh, all right, uh, strut or dtrut, and phi, <laughs> okay. Um, so that's just kind of a list I somewhat came up off the top of my head uh, way back when. Um, I'm sure there are other things that do similar type work. Uh, maybe system imager, I guess. Um, what was that? Cow builder. Cow builder, yeah. Well, that's P builder, but yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, so a lot of these tools have things in common. Um, Many of them uh, will often build a cheroot, and most commonly that's done with like the bootstrap or CD bootstrap or something like that. Um, so they, they initialize a cheroot, right? And uh, how many of you have worked with cheroots? Yeah, there we go. Got to get some questions with everybody raising their hand. Um, so they all initialize a cheroot, and then uh, you know usually the tools they're not going to install all the packages you want. So you want to install extra packages inside the cheroot, right? 
Um, so these are common tasks across many of these tools, um, and they probably, you know, most of them probably use the bootstrap or CD bootstrap. Uh, but for the extra package installation, there's probably probably a lot of variation as to how people go about it. I'm sure a lot of people do it manually with a lot of the tools. Um, some tools will provide something to say, well, also install this, and maybe you just do that by seeding it with the bootstrap, or maybe you root into it and app get install it. Um, but uh, they all usually have some method for installing extra packages because a base Debian install is not, uh, a core Debian install is not very interesting, right? Um, so uh, another thing some of the tools do is they maybe generate an apt repository, um, such as Debian CD, you know, it generates an apt repository of some form, you stick it on a CD, and um, and then uh, frequently you're going to want to do some dependency resolution when you're when you're generating that repository. Um, uh, another common thing, uh, I'm kind of just looking at some of these tools, is uh, some way of installing tasks or profiles. You know, a specific grouping of packages that are. Uh, that are useful, and uh, that way the user doesn't have to specify, you know, every single package individually. You know, they can specify collections of packages, um, you know, with task cell or who knows what, any other mechanisms people know of? Task cell, anything else? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Dub tags. Okay. Um, so it has its own mechanism for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you got to get your packages somehow, right? Uh, so usually that means downloading them or making a mirror and then uh, copying that somewhere. Um, and uh, there are a number of tools that can be useful for that. Um, some of them are just dynamic, you know, app proxies where you just uh, point it at the mirror, and if it doesn't have it, it goes and fetches it for you, then brings it back. Uh, there's also mirrors to do like a full-blown, you know, mirror for an architecture, um, or <laughs> maybe even the entire mirror uh, in some cases, though those are getting pretty rare, I'm guessing. Um, but you need some means to get all of these packages that you then install into a Cheroot. Uh, or maybe you install into an app repository or something. Um, so uh, one of the most commonly used tools for that is probably apt itself, right? You just use apt. Uh, you get the packages that way. Uh, another common task is configuration. Uh, you, know, uh, you install a raw Cheroot, uh, you want to you don't necessarily always want to use all the defaults for everything. So many of these systems have some ways to tweak certain packages, add configuration options. Maybe it's done through debconf preceding. Maybe it's done through butchering the files manually. You know, maybe using CF Engine or Puppet, something like that. Um, another. Another thing I was thinking of is uh, some of them do an image generation of some form, whether it's generating an ISO image for the CD, uh, a, a network block device, an NVD image that you then export over the network to boot, um, USB stick images, that sort of thing. So that's like just one big file that you then use to do something with. Um, and. Another another common technique is cloning. You know, you take a base system and through some means you make a copy of that system, maybe adjusting the, the few things that should vary. Um, so these are some, some common needs uh, that I just came up with. Um, does anybody have any suggestions for other ideas, uh, other commonalities between tools? Or, or should I say does, please <laughs> bring up some other ideas. I think one important thing is that all the tools uh, should be separated. So I think it's not very good to have a tool that's building the change route, doing the customization and creating an image or um, because often people like to have only one part of this functionality and like 
the Unix philosophy, uh, we should have a separate command for each task. I've got an uncommonality, I think, which is um, cross-installing as opposed mm -hmm. to just installing, which I guess nobody else really wants to do apart from the embedded people. And Debian does an appalling job. I mean, there's nothing at all in the system that lets you move the root of all the maintainer scripts before running them, well, apart from chirruting. But now you have to have everything in the chirrut that you need to install everything rather than just the stuff that you actually wanted to install. So you have to install a whole pile of other packages and uh, most of that stuff is just fiddling them out with files and registering things and uh, boring stuff that doesn't need to be done by the target device. Um, so I'd really like to see changes made to support that, but that's a really big deal. There's all sorts of things we have to change to make it work. I've got, I've got one question. Uh, does the bootstrap currently support creating the the first change routes on a different architecture? Does this work? Uh, yes, yeah, but you have to run all the maintainer scripts. The second stage you have to do on the device, essentially, or under QEMU or something. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I've been actually a, a fair amount of work I've done this conference was using QEMU to generate a cross-architecture LTSP setup. Um, which only so far seems to work on Armio, but <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, another topic. Um, yeah, one point, I guess, just to, for people who haven't thought about this before, the main thing, as well as being able to s tell all your scripts to run over here, uh, or at least on the files over there, um, separating the install time and um, Runtime, but separating the dependencies so that you know which things you needed um, for installing the files versus actually uh, at runtime uh, when the package is running will be really useful, and then you could tell. Um, and actually separating the script into those two parts as well. So there's a maintainer install the file script, and then a maintainer actually run on the system because this really does need to run on the actual box when it finally boots. Which I guess we could do. I mean, it would just be another stage in all those scripts and pre things and post things. And okay. Um, so, uh, so some of the common kind of lower level tools maybe uh, maybe go for another round of hands here. Uh, do bootstrap or CD bootstrap? Anybody? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, apt FTP archive. Yeah, DAC. No, Repre Pro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, a prox, app cacher, app proxy. All those. All right, great. <laughs> Wget, curl, rsync. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <see>? Shell. <laughs> Shell. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, so where are we going to go with all this stuff? Uh, we're doing all these things. We have all this code. Uh, some of it's disturbingly similar, but different in its own ways. Um, I remember look, when I first looked at the Zen Tools script, I'm like, this looks just like LTSP, but all the vari variable names are different. Um, or or uh, Debian Live, you know, same kind of a thing. It's like uh, a lot of them have like this layered uh, layered structure where you load plugins as you go and you build something. Um, and uh, it seems like a lot of code duplication. Uh, like kernel selection was one I noticed remarkable similarities in code. Um, when you're picking a generic kernel to install, uh, you know, some architectures uh, there really isn't a generic kernel. A lot of architectures there are. Sometimes you can just Tack on the the dpackage architecture name. Sometimes you have to, you know, just know. Oh well, it's 486, or you know, uh, coming up with that stuff. Um, so, just one well. thing: there's multi-strap, as well as debootstrap and cdebootstrap. There's now multi-strap huh. for anyone who hasn't discovered the fundamental difference being that you can point it at several repositories at once and just get app to work out what you need, which is really really useful. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, 
gathered all you people here. Um, I would say that if I look at the list of the tools, uh, there are a lot of tools that are not general purpose, but for a really specific um, environment like the Xen tools. They are only for setting up uh, the, the Xen environment. So sure, it's just a change root environment with some additional Xen specific configuration files. I think the same applies to LTSP and um, maybe things like pBuilder is very uh, general and I would guess Phi is also one of the really general things. Hmm. Sure. But, uh, but they all still do almost identical things uh, along the way. I mean, they're, they're general tasks. Uh, um, the, I mean, if you looked at it, I, I bet a bulk of the code wouldn't really be all that Phi specific or LTSP specific or or any of that. You know, that'd be a small part of what they're actually doing. Perhaps I'm wrong, <laughs> but uh, from the few ones I've looked at, they look pretty similar. Um, well, so and we. Sounds like you've actually had a look at the code base. Do you think you could take two of those and turn them into the same script? I mean, how much work is that? Or is, you know, uh. or <laughs> does, does it need to be split like it says, turned into three chunks? Right. And then you make those, you know, so it's split it by level. And mm. then you really can make something. Um, but I guess it, it re the two maintainers of whoever maintains these things need to say, well, yeah, okay, maybe we should just have one. But right, right. Uh -huh. um, well, it, it's almost more of a political decision than a technical one. I mean, there's work to be done. You know, people re have to re-implement things. There'll be regressions, whatever. They'll have to come up with ways to do it. But uh, technically, it's just some work and people letting go of the their complete control over their own tool. Um, that's my guess on it. Uh, but yeah. um, <laughs> I think it was last year when uh, Michael Prokop, which does the uh, who, who does the Grimmel Live CD, I think you all know this. It's a Knopix-like Live CD for sysadmins. And in the past, he was doing the next version of his ISO image uh, by loopback mount his ISO image change root into it and then do manual changes to the file system, upgrading to new packages, and then all uh, recreating the new ISO image. And then I showed him Phi, and I think it, it uh, took two months for him to work a little bit on, on this, and now he's uh, creating his uh, ISO image always from scratch, by just writing some Phi configuration files and he can also use his scripts to do some customization on this change root environment and also uh, creating the ISO image is done with Phi and his scripts. So maybe if other people like to have a look at it, can I also create my special change root environment with some additional config files? Yeah, you can just contact me or the file mailing list and have a try. Right. Yeah, I've also, um, I've before just kind of as an experiment, I've used LTSP to generate a bootable live CD image. You know, it's the uh, same type of technology. Those both share a read-only root file system where you somehow overlay some place to write the stuff you need to write. But yeah, so. Uh, even as a proof of concept, it's not hard to do uh, cross-tool purposes or, or emulate the functionality of other tools. Um, and I think uh, that, that that's one of the big points with uh, the move towards libvert and all that stuff, too, is that uh, you know, you've got all these, I think it supports uh, KVM, Zen, Kimu, uh, and a handful of others, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's a good example of just moving towards one tool that can really handle all of these things which are virtually identical. Um, <laughs> but, uh, 
But, uh, yeah. Well. So. So where next? Are there any people... I don't know. Uh, Debian boots, pretty specifically Debian installer related. Um, hmm? I suppose, yeah. Um, yeah, would it be useful to have a yet another mailing list to discuss these sort of things? <laughs> um, I sort of thought of it in the uh, once Debian custom now blends sort of infrastructure, uh, a, using it less as a customization for a user experience and more of a customization for a specific uh, hmm, a specific implementation instance. Um, would you like? Uh, is, is there a need for having a common list? So we, we had a need for this simple CDD discussion, obviously, and I, I, perhaps we, we might merge it with FI or something, but there is a FI mailing list and you don't need all this. In, in, in principle, I think every specific tool has its specific list, which in turn means that these tools will never uh, can cooperate with each other. I, I have, but what I learned from this blends effort with uh, the, the project which have much in common do not discuss on the common list. Mm. That I always have to cross post several lists, even if it uh, concerns uh, very general things, but people do not really like this general list. Mm. So I kind of missed the beginning of this. Does everybody actually use the bootstrap and then wrap that in various? Messing about, is that how FAI and CDD and so on work? Or sort of. Uh, they're, they're not all uh, in the category of things that generate cheroots, like Debian CD. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily generate a cheroot. Although Debian installer, while it's doing the going through its process, that does. Um, so there's. A, so they don't all necessarily use that, but I think most of them probably do at least have that common foundation. Uh, though I think uh, there are definitely some which uh, lean towards C to bootstrap and some which use the bootstrap, and now we've got multi-strap, I guess. So, yeah, uh, so I think if I'm right, we used um, a separate install script for the bootstrap to start with, uh, but various things broke and I think it was easier to give up and do something else than it was to, to carry on with that I think is where we currently are um, and the lack of an ability to point it at multiple repositories was the biggest thing but I guess we could teach so in fact what we ended up doing in the end was just multi-strap just basically gives a list to apt and says go and get these things and then and that's right. The fun, the other important bit is that you don't end up with all the debs in the image you've created, which always seems to be a rather shitty feature of Debootstrap. It's twice as big as it needs to be. Um, and having unpacked everything, it then goes and unpacks them again, this time telling Dpackage about it. And you just go, it doesn't need to do that. So we actually unpack them and do everything apart from the actual configuration step, which is the only bit we couldn't do locally. I've gone all vague. So yeah, so uh, well, we didn't object to the tool. It just didn't really work very well. Um, maybe we should just. But I think I didn't write it. You need Neil, and he's not here. Um, my understanding is that the multi-strap approach is is very different. It's not just a change of the scripts. Um, I have no idea whether it worked for everyone else. Maybe. Um, I guess maybe the way to proceed is pretty much for people maintaining the tools to talk to each other one by one to kind of go, hmm. could we do the same thing or not? Um, with you know, how much difference is there actually between each each pair? Uh, I'm not sure that sitting here today we can. It's it, it, I have no idea what the rest of you do. <laughs> I've never looked. We started by asking. So what do you do? 
<laughs> yeah, well, I think I just told you. Yeah. Um, so there's two tools. There's as well as multi-strap um, for doing grip installations. There's M Sandbox for doing um, crush installations, which uh, uh, does an awful lot of jiggery pokery to basically because we can't run the maintainer scripts, but we need to have an image configured enough that it will actually boot. Um, we actually just go and basically take a load of code out of all the maintainer scripts, not in any organized way, just to kind of manually go, oh, we need to do this, and we need to do that, and we need to do the other, and put them together in a big scripty thing. So it's vile. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we could, because there's no infrastructure, you know, there's no metadata in Debian that allows which parts of uh, a maintainer script can be run, even though it's all, most of it's auto-generated by Deb Helper, uh, so it could be auto-generated differently. Um, and it would do what we wanted. But because basically there's no scheme for it at all, we just have to do horrible hackery. Uh, so yes, we'd be pleased to throw it all away. It's hopeless and unmaintainable and and, and rubbish. <laughs> but, it, you know, it does work. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to use somebody else's tools. If any of it works, please tell us how we should be doing it differently. Yeah. Well... Well, uh with lack of much direction. <laughs> I don't know if we just want to uh, kind of wrap up and maybe have some informal one-on-one -on -one discussion or something along those lines. I mean, I've long been meaning to look at Phi and I look at it briefly and then, and then I go on to other things. <laughs> so I know uh, it's, it's hard to step out of what you're working on and look at somebody else's and take the time to do that, but I think it would benefit all of us to do a little bit of that. Um, so that's, uh, I don't know, I, I might come away from here trying to make a commitment to, to look at some of these other tools in greater depth. And I, was, I was thinking maybe we could sketch out like a design of how the ultimate image creation tool would work. <laughs> uh, do we have time for that? Sure. I, I think so. I don't know. Yeah. So what I was thinking was uh, I went to Joey Hess's Dev Helper 7 talk um, and I was really inspired by the override stuff. And I was thinking maybe that could be applied to this sort of situation. Hmm. Yeah, so um so maybe to briefly describe what that, that was like or just to paraphrase what the, the override stuff was. Um so normally Dev Helper just automatically figures out based on the upstream source what you want to do. And then if it doesn't know what, if it can't figure it out, then you can create an override um, underscore whatever the step is rule and then put in uh, what it, what that rule is supposed to do when Deb Helper can't figure it out. So in that way, it, it embeds all the commonalities in Deb Helper and then all the differences are just in your rules file. All right. I think uh, in Phi we have something similar. In Phi, when building change root environments, we call it Phi Deer install. And um, this is a sequence of tasks we execute. So sure, the first task is calling the bootstrap. And in Phi, it's also possible to extend or replace each task. We call it hooks, or you can also say plugins. So it's, it's, I, it, it's similar because you can override or extend a certain task with some other script or functionality. Yeah, yeah I think uh, LTSP also has like a plugin system where you can have a local administrator plugin or a plugin installed by another package that overrides the defaults. So yeah, so to some degree maybe we have that, but uh might be hard to represent it as elegantly as Deb Helper does, but that would be a nice goal. <coughs> um. Yeah, 
right, when, to evaluate whether this is possible, you need a list of all the things that all the various installers do to work out what the ultimate one has to support. Um, and then you know, some idea of the difficult corner cases, you know, the bits you can't run because it's not the right architecture or um, whatever other people's problems are. Um, and you know, and then if you can think of a design that does that, it seems to me the problem is is solved. Haha. <laughs> apart from writing the code, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I mean, the point about the DH is that you write down the differences from what you normally do, as opposed to writing down everything you do, um, which I guess might make sense in this context. Uh, although writing down all the things you need to do, um, I suppose yeah, it's it's. It's more configurable, it's more automatic if you only wrote down the differences, isn't it? Because uh, you, know, there's, you can guess better. Um. How are we on time? Yeah, see you for 25 minutes if you like. <laughs> All right. So I think the next step of this discussion is maybe someone, um, whoever has time, look at the archive and see, or look at the tools that depend on the bootstrap or see the bootstrap, yeah, see the bootstrap, and just review the the differences and the, the commonalities there, and see which one does most of it, mm -hmm. and yeah. Anybody want to do a app cache R depends on uh, dbootstrap? Get a list. <laughs> I think that's the right. Yeah. App, uh, app cache R depends on dbootstrap. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. A lot more than we've mentioned, eh? <laughs> okay. So that's more than we mentioned so far. Some uh, obvious glaring omissions so far? I don't know because I don't know what some of these are. <laughs> Rootstrap, uh, S build. Right. Um, box. Mdebian root FS. Live helper, LTSP server, PyParts. QMU builder. Most of these, most of these were mentioned in some way or another. Phi server, utility servers, and tools. Detroit. Okay. There's one tool called Rootstrap. I didn't yeah. know. Uh, Ganete instance the Bootstrap seems to be a special version of the Bootstrap. Hmm. Yeah, and mostly are the virtualization or change rule tools. Hmm. Auto package test Xen LVM embedded root FS. Okay. So that's a pretty good list, I guess. Um that handles more of the cheroot cases. Um There's another one, um, DebEarth. It generates ah. init RDs, De um, Debian in an init RD. Okay. That would be in the in image generation, in cheroot creation, probably extra packages category. All right. Yeah. Yeah, we could categorize these with dev tags. 
Uh, I've got one question. Uh, in file, um, we also need something like apt cacher, app proxy, and I get very d different uh, replies to what people are using. Uh, I'm using sometimes apt proxy. I have mostly a complete mirror of the major architecture on my uh, machine. Uh, I heard there's app cacher next generation or something else. Which is the one tool that works really good? <laughs> I don't really claim any expertise except last time I looked, I looked at this a while ago and everyone said app proxy is shite, it doesn't work properly, so I didn't bother. And I recently put app cacher in and it's brilliant. And I should have done it years ago. It is fucking marvelous. <laughs> Um, so I have no complaints at all on that front, but I don't know if there's corner cases where it's problematic. Right. And I have used in the past app proxy, and, it, and eventually when it got rewritten in Python, the memory usage skyrocketed. And then and I'd looked at app cacher years ago, and something about it just made me nervous. And then I've been using a prox. <laughs> But I haven't looked at either app cache or app proxy in any recent, probably four years. But I'm an approx loyalist here. But, uh, all right. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well. Any more exciting new ideas about how we can cooperate, collaborate, or poke each other in the eyes? I think we need to go around and poke everyone in the eye one by one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're kind of at the we need a design document stage, really, because mm -hmm. I have no idea. Well, I guess most of us have no idea what all the others do, really, um, right. in any detail that uh, to work out what the commonality is beyond the bootstrap. So uh, create a mailing list and uh, <laughs> get on it. And maybe yeah. a wiki page. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, is anybody excited to work on this? I have some interest. That's why I started this talk. <laughs> I think we're very happy to use common infrastructure if if it exists. Yeah, I don't know how much we could spend some time on it. Yeah, um, mm. you, know, uh, you know, on our our corner, as it were. Um, as I say, most of our issue is really major Debian infrastructure changes. It doesn't really, the tools is uh, a relatively minor detail. Um, mm. As it stands, we're just working around the the lack of infrastructure. So that's that's really a separate problem. But you know. The stuff we have got that's different, I'm very happy to merge with something. All right. So, uh, somebody want to create a wiki page now? Just initialize it with some empty content? Or just, uh, you could cut and paste the, the talk uh, synopsis or whatever, stick it on a wiki page. Who's going to be the first to do it? <laughs> we'll have 10. I don't have a computer right now. Ah. I'm thinking we get it done now so that uh, we oh. go away and uh, we got something to hit <laughs> at a later date. Not any uh, comments on IRC or anything, right? Okay. Whew. How do you call this buff? I called this buff building Debian from Debian. Like that. We start with, we can always rename it. Yeah. <laughs> Meta Debian installer. <laughs> All right. DIDR Debian installer dot dot right. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, 
sounds good. And then thank you all for coming uh, at this wee hour in the morning. And uh, yeah. Yeah, there's that too.